What if I told you that you were afraid of the wrong arachnid? Here in the US, most people revere two spiders as the deadliest bites, the black widow and the brown recluse. But there is a creature from an entirely different arachnid order that we should be worried about. And to find out why, I need to get up close and personal with the Arizona bark scorpion. There are over 2,500 known species of scorpion in the world, lurking in the shadowy corners of the tropics, neotropics, and even many temperate zones. These venomous, clawed arachnids are one of the freakiest looking predators in the arthropod world, and some of them are serious threats to people. I'm Spencer Hoffman, and it's been my mission to uncover the mysteries of the secret world that surrounds us every day, where countless unusual creatures live out their hidden lives largely unseen by people. Sometimes, this secret world spills over into ours, and given the alien nature of many of its denizens, those interactions are not always positive, especially where highly venomous arachnids come in. In the southwest United States, one of the most dangerous arthropods you could possibly encounter is the Arizona bark scorpion. To uncover the secrets of this toxic arachnid, I first need to find one. And while they're fairly common in households, I can't really go knocking door to door asking for scorpions. No, I'm heading out into the desert, and we're taking advantage of one of the coolest parts of scorpion biology to track them down. It turns out that under UV light, scorpions actually glow. So we're scanning the desert washes with black lights in hopes of finding ancient, creepy arachnids. There we go. That's a big scorpion right there. That is a desert hairy. Okay, this is not the one we're looking for, but that'll do. Let me grab a container really quick. Hey, buddy. Hey, buddy. You're okay. That'll do. There you go. Hi. Wow. Look at that scorpion. Have a look at that. That is a big scorpion right there. An impressive one. That, let's see if it'll come out on the stick for me. Look at that animal right there. That is one impressive scorpion. I think I'm actually gonna take him off here and see if he will calm down on my hand. Hi. Oh, you're a little stressed. A little stress pose. The trick with this is always to watch the animal's disposition. You can see, he's not so sure, but right there, he's calmed down. The scorpions are one of the arachnids that people fear the most, even more than spiders. And you can kind of see why. Look at how creepy looking he is. They are probably one of the strangest looking invertebrates we could have possibly found out here in the wash. And one of the things I notice is, even though they're kind of bulky looking and they have that like sort of translucency to their exoskeleton, they're actually really hard. Like they look like they'd be soft, but this animal has a weight to it. It almost feels like a tarantula or something, but it's a lot creepier than a tarantula. The Desert Hairy Scorpion is the biggest scorpion we have here in the US. They are one fierce hunter here in these washes. They're just patrolling around with those pincers in the front splayed out. Those guys serve a dual purpose. They're both sensory organs and the primary way that they actually trap their prey. They'll be walking over these rocks, scanning for all kinds of little soft-bodied invertebrates. And if he finds one, he's gonna latch on with those pincers and whack it with that tail, pumping it full of neurotoxic venom, ending its life in seconds so that it can then chew it up with those claw-like mouth parts right in the front. These guys have some of the strangest anatomy of any arachnid. And yeah, that's why they creep people out. Now, the Desert Hairy Scorpion is one of the less venomous scorpions here in the US, but that's not the only reason why handling this creature was safe. This scorpion was showing very calm, very relaxed demeanor. And that's something I look for when I'm deciding whether or not to actually free handle the different creatures that I feature here on the channel. I've handled a lot of spiders, many of which were extremely venomous. Most of those interactions have been incredibly safe because I'm watching the spider for cues that it's feeling defensive. And most of them are pretty much content to either just sit there 
or they'll kind of just explore around going about their business. Where scorpions are a little bit different, especially the Arizona bark scorpion, is scorpions in general, being very subterranean, nocturnal creatures, they tend to be a lot more skittish. They're more likely to feel defensive. And where the Arizona bark scorpion and widow and recluse spiders differ is in recent modern history, the Arizona bark scorpion actually does have confirmed human kills where the spiders here in the US do not. In fact, the Arizona bark scorpion is considered so serious, it's one of the only scorpions in the world that actually has FDA approved anti-venom for it. So these guys are really no joke. To think that such a small scorpion is so incredibly venomous is just shocking to me. You know, why they're so toxic, we don't 100% know but that venom is a tool for subduing their prey. It is highly neurotoxic, designed to completely shut down the central nervous system of the different insects and spiders they're eating. It just also happens to be pretty effective against the central nervous system of humans too. It's pretty cool stuff, and it's helped these scorpions to be extremely successful out here in the desert. And we know that the desert can be pretty tough to survive in. So if you're enjoying this video, I would appreciate if you'd leave a like down below. That actually helps videos like these spread to more viewers just like you so we can all discover the secrets of the natural world together. And while we're exploring this wash, hopefully we'll get some really incredible secrets in the form of a super toxic scorpion. Even though the environment here is so dry, there's actually a large diversity of unusual life in the Sonoran Desert. And to increase their chances of survival, scorpions and other desert arachnids have a few special adaptations. Scorpions have a thick, waxy cuticle covering their exoskeleton that helps them retain water in this arid habitat. In the desert, conserving what little resources you have is pivotal for your survival. And of course, there is a reason we're not looking for them in the middle of the day. Even with their cuticles, the desert sun would bake them alive. So like just about everything else in the Sonoran Desert, scorpions are nocturnal. And nothing is more exciting than seeing their green silhouettes against the dark rocky terrain as you're blacklighting in the desert. I just spotted them out of the corner of my eye. You probably can't see it yet, but watch when I do this. Can you see them? Yeah. That is an Arizona bark scorpion, unmistakable. I'm gonna figure on that real quick. Hi, right, buddy. Oh my gosh, he went nuts. No, what got the, him. what in Got him. And huge beetle. <laughs> I, got, I got a little bit distracted with the beetle for a second. Like, this <laughs> thing's like a, a whole aircraft. This thing's, you need to register this with the FAA. Look at that. <laughs> look at the size of this thing, ow. It's thorax, it's like, look at that. So what do you think it is? It's armored. One of the prionid beetles. Or maybe like a hardwood stump borer, it's that same it's a, Yeah, family. it's some kind of stump borer. We're so focused They're on the mean the, looking. Yeah, we're so focused on the most venomous yeah. scorpion. Really. Yeah, a little bit, a little bit chaotic there. But this one, we're gonna go get this under a little bit more of a controlled environment and take a closer look. Wow. What I've got right here is an Arizona bark scorpion, and that is the most venomous scorpion in the United States. It does not get much more nerve wracking than that. These guys, they've killed people, and they are ridiculously common in these parts. See that behavior right there? That tail posture that he's got right now, he's holding it up there like, like that, very, very agitated, and he was mad ever since we got him. This is not an animal that I'm gonna be free handling. I know, I think, Spencer, Spencer, hold it, hold it, hold it. Why don't you get stung? Mm -mm. A sting from this guy, that, that'll do a little bit more than just ruin your day. That'll probably make you sick for two or three days, and even just recovering, you're gonna be tired and fatigued. Not one that I wanna risk. The venom from this animal is more toxic than most rattlesnakes we come across out here in the desert. So definitely a creature to absolutely give its space and respect. Let's take a look at this animal's anatomy. You know, how do you know if you've got a bark scorpion in your house, one of the more helpful pest control species? Well, we noticed it has a very slender, small body. We caught a desert hairy scorpion earlier on this outing, and that was a big, bulky scorpion, almost like the tarantula of the scorpion world. These guys are kind of like the brown recluse of the scorpions. They're thin, spindly, almost kind of pale, like they don't see enough light. One of the best ways to find out if these guys are in your house is actually having a little black light. Some people will put them on their porch, but you can get little flashlights like this, and you can see under the black light, they fluoresce really well bright green 
Now, seeing a scorpion glow is not a perfect way to tell that you have dangerous scorpions around. All scorpions fluoresce to some degree, but because you can see that color so strikingly against the background, watch for really skinny scorpions. This isn't a perfect way to tell that a scorpion is dangerous, but have a look at the pincers there. Really skinny little claws on the pedipalps. Now, one thing I talk about a lot here is that the appearance of an animal can kind of give you clues to their biology. Now, we know scorpions are venomous, but if we see very thin claws in the pedipalps, they're probably not using brute force to overpower their prey. They probably have a really toxic venom. The venom of the bark scorpion is neurotoxic. Some of the reports I've heard from really bad stings, you're gonna have numbness, even paralysis in the affected limb, as well as severe pain. These guys are no joke. That venom is gonna basically wreak havoc on your calcium channels that your nerves use to create motor function and send signals to your brain. And it's gonna tell you that you are in a world of hurt. In really severe cases, it can shut down your central nervous system and put you into respiratory failure. Not an animal to mess with. You know, a lot of times I do talk about protecting these creatures. Widow spiders, centipedes, venomous snakes, a lot of them, they're, they're not really pests, right? They're actually just predators that just happen to have a very toxic venom. And that toxic venom leads to really unfortunate, unwanted human interactions sometimes. This guy right here, there's not a whole lot of good things I can say about it. They are very common. They like to hide in little crevices, so inside of a glove, inside of a shoe, inside of a shirt that was left on the ground. They tend to find themselves in really inconvenient places, and as you can see, they're really finicky, skittish animals, which means stings happen really, really frequently. This is a great reason to keep other things like spiders, like larger scorpions, like centipedes around because they eat these guys. You know, I'm not gonna kill this animal. We got this, we're, we're out in a natural area. Sure, people come here, but the people who come here are kind of aware that you're stepping out into the secret world where these animals live. And we're kind of aware to be careful when we're in these creatures' territory. The bottom line is these scorpions are incredibly venomous and incredibly common, which makes them a problem. But we have to remember that as dangerous as this animal can be, they're not out to get us. And as long as we adapt our behavior to avoid unwanted interactions with them when we're in the areas they live, we can coexist with the Arizona bark scorpion. And the thing is, scorpions are freaky. I'm not gonna lie, they freak me out way more than spiders do, but at the end of the day, not all of them are super toxic, and all of these scorpions are an integral part of the secret world that surrounds us every single day. And we don't know what the world would look like if scorpions were to disappear forever. If you happen to see a scorpion, just keep your distance, admire it and respect it from afar, and you should be fine. Now, one other group that also freaks me out way more than spiders are the centipedes. And wouldn't you believe it, we have some pretty gnarly giant centipedes here in North America. One of them actually lives in the city of Miami. If you wanna learn more about that creepy looking creature, check out this video right here. Hope to see you there, but until next time, don't forget to get outside and find your own adventure.